This is Carla Hinton with the Oklahoma newspaper and newsok.com. I'm here in the studio with the Most Reverend Paul S. Coakley. He is Archbishop of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Oklahoma City. We're here to talk about a big event that is set for Saturday, September 23rd here in downtown Oklahoma City, the beatification of the Reverend Stanley Rother. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. It's good to be with you today, Carla. I think big is probably uh, understated. <laughs> this is a huge event, right? It is in many ways. It's certainly big for Oklahoma, but it is an historic event in many ways for the, the Catholic Church in the United States. Uh, Father Rother is the first American-born priest, martyr, uh, to be beatified. Uh, beatification is a very important step toward canonization, uh, which is uh, when somebody is recognized by the Catholic Church as a saint. Uh, Father Rother will be recognized as Blessed Stanley Rother after the beatification. That's never happened for an American priest in this country. Right, right. It's huge. <laughs> so, can you share some brief information about Father Rother, his life and his sure. ministry career? Yeah. I've heard you uh, talk about this all over yeah. the place, but uh, can you do it one more time for sure. me? Sure. Uh, Father Rother is from Okarchi, Oklahoma. He was born in 1935, uh, raised on a farm. Uh, very devout uh, German Catholic uh, family, members of Holy Trinity uh, Parish. That's where he went to school, uh, all the way through high school. And as he was graduating high school, uh, he kind of sprung it on his family, his parents, that he wanted to go to seminary and prepare for priesthood. Um, so that's uh, where his ministry uh, career started. Um, he struggled in seminary. Uh, at that time, uh, in the 1950s, uh, classes, textbooks, and, and Roman Catholic seminaries were conducted largely in Latin. And because he didn't really prepare and plan to go to seminary, he had not studied Latin in high school. And he really struggled with, with the Latin requirement at seminary at that time. And so, consequently, uh, after uh, one year of uh, studying at uh, seminary in Texas, uh, he was asked to, uh, to leave because they didn't think that he could handle the academic work. His bishop didn't give up on him and he was not overly discouraged by that uh, brick wall that he hit and uh, the bishop sent him to another seminary in Maryland, uh, Mount St. Mary Seminary in Emmitsburg, which happened to have been my alma mater, which okay. is where I really first learned about him. And there with a, a, t a tutor in Latin and such, he flourished. and. Uh, he was always a very hands-on kind of guy, very comfortable, you know, fixing things, right. fixing tractors, whatever. So at the seminary, uh, he was able to use some of those skills that he had learned as well as his, his uh, work on his academics. And he was ordained a priest uh, for, the Ar for the Diocese of Oklahoma City and Tulsa okay. uh, in 1963. The whole state was one Catholic diocese at the time. After five years ministering in Oklahoma City and in Durant, uh, in Tulsa, uh, he was, uh, he volunteered actually for the Oklahoma Catholic Mission in Guatemala. And he was sent uh, to that mission in 1968 and he spent the rest of his life there ministering to the, uh, uh, the Guatemalan people, largely Sutuhil, Mayan uh, descendants, okay. uh, and the parish of Santiago Atitlan, uh, St. James the Apostle on the shores of beautiful volcanic lake, Lake Atitlan. And that's where he lived out his life, uh, was able to uh, be a very effective missionary, made his home there, won the hearts of the people. They certainly won his heart. And he flourished there until the end of his life, which ended rather violently. Okay, okay. So. He was killed by unknown assailants, is that right? Yes, during that period, especially in the 1970s uh, and into 1980, it really uh, became uh, very, very hot there. There was a lot of civic, uh, civil unrest. Right. Uh, guerrillas and uh, conflict with a very uh, kind of right-wing uh, government and um, somehow the church got into the, the, the crosshairs of that conflict. They, uh, many of the, in the government uh, saw the church as being subversive simply because of the dedication of Father Rother and others to caring for the poor, the, the illiterate, uh, and teaching them to read, teaching them to write. Uh, one of the things Father Rother did was to be, as a part of a team, translate uh, the New Testament into their native language and begin to teach people uh, their faith. And uh, 
somehow that became a, a threat. Um, he did other things as well. He established a health clinic, uh, a school, um, and uh, finally uh, in, in 1981, uh, I should say in the end of 1980, he learned that his name was on a, a, a hit list, a death list. Okay. And uh, he was shaken by that, as was his bishop who had sent him there. Right. Um, and uh, for a time he came back to Oklahoma after Christmas in 1981 uh, to discern whether or not the, it was time for him to come back to Oklahoma. He had been there for 13 years and uh, um, after a couple of months he decided that his heart was still with his people and he felt as if he had abandoned them. And so finally with his bishop's uh, approval uh, he returned to uh, Guatemala uh, in time for Holy Week, Palm Sunday, 1981. Okay. And by July 28th, on the night of July 28th, uh, uh, people broke into his uh, rectory and he was shot and, and killed in the rectory. Okay. Okay. okay, Thank you, thank you for that. That gives us an, uh, an idea of who he was yeah. and uh, what, happened, what happened to him. So can you tell me a little bit about the uh, beatification ceremony itself? Are there any specifics that you can give us mm, sure. as, as, as far as the ceremony? The ceremony will take place uh, at the Cox Convention Center Saturday morning, 10 a.m., uh, September 23rd. And it will be presided over by Cardinal Angelo Amato, who is the prefect for the Congregation for the Causes of Saints. That's a, a department within the, the Vatican uh, that really um, is dedicated to uh, studying the lives of holy men and women uh, and uh, vetting their lives and, and ultimately making a decision or making a recommendation to the Pope as to whether somebody uh, should be recognized by the church as a martyr or as having lived a life of heroic virtue or, and ultimately as a, as a blessed or as a saint. So Cardinal Amato will celebrate uh, the, the Mass of Beatification. Okay. The Beatification ceremony will occur right at the beginning of the Mass oh. when a, an apostolic letter from Pope Francis will be read, uh, formally declaring uh, Father Stanley Rother, Venerable Servant of God, is his title right now, Stanley Rother, okay. to be blessed. And at that point, uh, an image that has been prepared, a banner, a festive banner that has uh, been prepared, uh, uh, which we hope will kind of capture who he was and, uh, and, and the culture in which he ministered will be unveiled, uh, and then uh, the, the Mass will continue. Okay, okay, okay. And I heard you say that you're expecting a, a, a contingent from Guatemala, right? We are. Uh, the local bishop, uh, Bishop Gonzalo Villa, the Diocese of Sololá, where Santiago Atitlan is, okay. uh, is going to be in attendance, and at least two other bishops, including the Archbishop of, of Guatemala City, will okay. be here. Uh, the pastor of the parish, Santiago Atitlan, uh, will be here, and a number of the parishioners from, the, from that parish, including some people who would have known uh, mm. Father Stanley uh, in the 19... 70s and 80s when he was uh, serving there. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting, okay. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about saints in the Roman Catholic Church. What can you tell me about uh, the purpose of the saints? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of questions, people sure. have questions sometimes, especially people in the in non-Catholic world. Yeah, well a saint is simply a friend of God. Uh, a saint is somebody who's lived their Christian faith as a faithful disciple uh, in an extraordinary way, in an exceptional way, in an heroic way. Okay. Uh, and the declaration of sainthood um, is a declaration that somebody is with God in heaven and that their life is worthy of veneration, which is to say admiration, they, they had cultivated virtues, they lived a life that is noteworthy, a life that we could strive to imitate in some way as we all strive to live out our Christian faith, to follow Jesus, to become more Christ-like. So the saints give us uh, that kind of witness, and that kind of example of what the gospel looks like when it has been fully incarnated, you know, okay. uh, made flesh okay. uh, once again. So we can learn from the lives of the saints how to live our Christian faith under every conceivable circumstance because God calls all of us ultimately, all of the baptized are called to become saints, which is to say we're all called to spend a life of blessedness with God in heaven. Uh, and these are men and women whom the church acknowledges are in heaven with God 
and that their lives are kind of a roadmap and guide to us of how to live out the gospel in our lives. Um, and just as the saints are uh, guides to us there and examples to us, um, they're interested in our lives just as they're members of the household of faith and just as we we encourage one another, just as we pray for one another, I might pray for you or you might pray for me in a time of need, uh, um, we ask the saints to pray for us. And this is something that's per perhaps often misunderstood about, about saints and their role in, in our church. Uh, we don't worship saints. Uh, we venerate the saints, which is to say we honor them right. uh, for the, the, the heroic life that they lived in following Jesus. Uh, and we ask them to pray for us, uh, to intercede for us. And to the extent that we pray to saints, we're really praying through the saints okay. to God. To, okay to the Father, through the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, they're, they're praying for us, they're interceding for us. And so that in essence, I think, is the importance of the saints. They, they show us that to which all of us are called, okay. to heaven, to glory. Uh, they show us what that looks like, lived out under every kind of circumstance uh, that human life can throw at us. Uh, and they are our friends who are ready to help us by their intercession. Okay, okay, I love that, well put. So, Archbishop Coakley, the beatification will place uh, Father Stanley Rother one step further to sainthood. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. He's not yet uh, a saint. He's a blessed, okay. which is an assurance that he is uh, with God in heaven. Uh, and what it means is that the church is approving uh, uh, public veneration of, of a blessed. Okay. So here in Oklahoma, for example, in the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City, every year in the church's liturgical calendar, there will be a feast day uh, in which Blessed Stanley Rother is honored, just as we have St. Patrick's Day, you know, okay. March 17th, or St. Joseph's Day, March 19th, or the feast of Saints Peter and Paul on June 29th. There will be a feast day for Blessed Stanley Rother on the calendar, and the date of that uh, feast day will be announced at the Beatification Mass. Okay. So he will be publicly honored, uh, but it's a local observance. Okay. When a person is uh, made a saint, it becomes a universal observance. Okay. So, um, but he's being lifted up for us as a, as a blessed uh, to, to seek his intercession, uh, to learn from his life. And um, the next step, the final step uh, of sainthood, canonization, is, the, is the, the process by which a person is declared to be a saint, will require a miracle. You say, what will it take for Father Rother to become a saint? Well, it'll take a miracle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we say that as if, well, it's impossible, but literally it will take a miracle okay. for him to be declared a saint because that's what's required. Mm -hmm. uh, once a person has been beatified, there needs to be a miracle which is attributable to his intercession. And ordinarily, that's a, a healing of some sort, okay. uh, a, a medical miracle, really. A, a healing, for example, of uh, somebody has turned to Blessed Stanley uh, in prayer to, and sought his help and received his assistance through their prayer uh, to bring about a healing that cannot be explained by medical science. Okay. So it has to be examined thoroughly and rigorously by medical science in a tribunal of of, of experts in medical science who will, who will study his medical history or her medical history and, and testify that mm, this can be explained in no other way than by some sort of miraculous intervention. Okay. And a medical doctor may not believe in miracles. All they can maybe say is there is no medical explanation for why this person who was so sick yesterday or had this deadly condition yesterday or this terminal condition yesterday is, mm -hmm. is healthy today. Okay. So how many people do you expect to come to the beatification? Do you have any guesstimates? Well, we made a decision early on, Carla, that you know, we didn't want to issue tickets because sometimes when you have tickets, um, people will get a ticket and they won't use it. And we didn't want there to be empty seats. So we just, we will have a few reserved sections for the Rother family and, and for the priests and bishops who are coming will be participating in the liturgy. But otherwise it'll be open seating. Okay. Uh, the Cox Center uh, will hold, I think, I think we figure about 14,000 people maximum. Okay. That's even if people are sitting kind of behind the staging area. Uh -huh. uh, we don't know if it will be at capacity. We've made some provision, even for overflow if necessary. Okay. Uh, but we hope to 
find 10,000 people there at least. We don't, we don't know, honestly. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming today and sharing things. You're very busy, obviously, so thanks for that. My, my pleasure, Carla. It's, it's great to be here. I'm grateful to the Oklahoman for, uh, for your interest in this, this great story for all of us here in Oklahoma and really for, for not just for Catholics, not just for Christians, but I think for all, all of us. This is a local hero that we can admire and, and celebrate. Right, right, right. This is perhaps the biggest story in my career as religion editor. If, if it's not the biggest, and I can't think of anything else, then it's certainly in the top two, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, who knows who's out there yeah, who might yeah. do something. But anyway, it's a big, big, big story, and it's a big event. So, it is indeed, yes. Yes, yes. The beatification of the Reverend Stanley Rother is set for 10 a.m. Saturday, September 23rd at the Cox Convention Center in downtown Oklahoma City. The public is invited to attend. Tickets are not required. Doors to the Cox Arena open at 8 a.m. For more information on this topic, read The Oklahoman.